Yellowstone supervolcano. How USGS said evolving tectonic activity triggers monstrous eruptions. This is on Express UK by Sebastian Ketley, just in today. Powerful tectonic activity at Yellowstone, which is in Wyoming, the supervolcano, is responsible for historic eruptions and caldera forming blasts. But what does this mean for the future concerning Yellowstone supervolcano's eruptions? Geologists can trace all activity over the past 17 million years to a vast geographic feature dubbed the Snake River Plain. It stretches across most of southern Idaho. The Snake River Plain violently formed when the North American plate passed over a scorching plume of magma in the Earth's crust. And this plume, which is believed to be currently residing under Yellowstone National Park, that is, under the Yellowstone supervolcano, is a hot spot. It's pushed the land upwards and forced the lava flows to the surface. And it's still there today, of course. This is a hot spot area. Today, geologists refer to this region as the Yellowstone Plateau Volcanic Field, YPVF. The youngest of many volcanic fields stretching from north, northern Nevada to southern Oregon. The United States Geological Survey, the USGS, is the society, the organization that keeps the uh, watchful eye on Yellowstone Volcano. It has an observatory there, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, and has dubbed this feature uh, the Earth's largest volcanic structure. In the weekly edition of Caldera Chronicles, USGS geologist Lisa Morgan explained how tectonic movements of the North American plate trigger a continuous cycle of evolution at the YPVF, the volcanic field, that is, the, of Yellowstone. The geologist said the current YPVF has seen three cataclysms, caldera forming eruption, starting with the first about 2.08 million years ago, and that eruption produced multiple ash sheets originating from at least three separate volcanic vents located within the Huckleberry Ridge caldera, a structure that is close to 100 kilometers across. The second big eruption, the Henry's Fork caldera, was considerably smaller, occurring about 1.3 million years ago, and was nested within the southwest portion of the older Huckleberry Ridge caldera. The last and most recent major eruption occurred about 631,000 years ago and formed the current shape of the Yellowstone caldera. According to Dr. Morgan, each of the three eruptions produced similar geological features across Yellowstone. The Yellowstone caldera blast was characterized by a series of rhyolite lava and basalt flows. The first of, this, of these started 1.2 million years ago. The caldera eruption itself took place across two separate blasts, which happened only a few days or a few weeks apart. Once the upper eruptions were over, the super eruptions were over, the volcanic caldera collapsed in on itself, and it formed the park's features as they are enjoyed by visitors in this present day. After that, the USGS found evidence of volcanic eruptions right after the caldera formed up and uh, up until about 450,000 years ago. And then Yellowstone reared its ugly head once again about 250,000 years ago with a renewed period of volcanism. So you see, it's not just uh, that they were saying 630 or 640,000 years ago, we had a super, super eruption again 450,000 years ago and 250,000 years ago with a, a renewed volcanic eruption. The most recent lava flows at Yellowstone Volcano occurred about 70,000 years ago. Dr. Morgan said, the post-caldera lava flows represent some of the largest rhyolite flows on Earth, many in excess of several tens of cubic kilometers in volume, exceeding up to 30 kilometers from their source fence and having thicknesses over 100 meters. That is over 300 feet. 
That's a hill, for goodness sakes. The thickness could be over 300 feet. That's a hill. Uh, uh, 300 feet, that's a 10-story building. Yellowstone's ongoing stage of volcanism is characterized by frequent hydrothermal activities, which the USGS has started uh, uh, about, uh, said started about 400,000 years ago. Another factor in the constant evolution of Yellowstone system is the effects of glaciation and the last ice age about 15,000 years ago. But what does all of this mean for the future of the volcanic activity at Yellowstone, the supervolcano, and the landscape as it continues to shift and change with time? Geologists believe caldera forming eruptions will cease at some point in the future. According to Dr. Morgan, the North American plate will move over and away from the Yellowstone magma plume, and Yellowstone will drop or subside substantially. Well, when is that going to happen? The North American plate will move over and away from Yellowstone magma plume? I mean, by the time that happens, it'll be another 10, 150 million years. A geologist said, then the cycle will begin once again. A new volcanic field complete with multiple large nested calderas, lakes, geyser basins, and hydrothermal explosions with accompanying tectonism will form to the northeast of the current day Yellowstone. We can take a look at some of the maps that have been supplied here by USGS, Kenneth Pierce, and Lisa Morgan. You can see the uh, Yellowstone Plateau Snake River Plain Volcanic Province. And as we move from lower left to the upper right, the lower left circles are the older ones. And they uh, progress in a uh, diagonal line from southeast to northwest to the newer ones, where we have today's caldera. That's as the uh, continental plate travels along the hotspot. We see this happening in various uh, uh, locations on Earth, one of them being, of course, another hotspot, being the Hawaiian Islands. The, um, island, the, the North Island that has Honolulu is the oldest of the islands, and the newer one being the Big Island, where we have Mauna Loa, Mauna Kea, and, Ke and Kilauea, which erupted, uh, Kilauea erupted last uh, year, finishing in August. It's in a pause phase now. So that's another area where we see the uh, tectonic plate, the, the, the cr Earth's crust moving along a hot spot. And we can see that the progression gives newer areas a flow. The whole of the Big Island, of course, is created by the flow of five volcanoes that make up the whole island. And the next Diagrams show the, again, USGS by Lisa Morgan and uh, Morgan and Finn. And we have the stage one was from 1.2 to 630,000 uh, years ago, 1.2 million to 630,000 years, pre-caldera tectonism and rhyolitic volcanism. And you can see the... Uh, the salt areas, the first mountain flows, and then stage two is 630,000 years ago, cataclysmic ignimbrite eruption and caldera formation. You can see the lava creek tuff, the yellow stone caldera is uh, dashed in black dashed lines. The uh, Spotted lines are the 2.1 million year Yellowstone caldera boundary, which was much bigger. And you have, of course, a diagram of the Yellowstone Lake right there, as we see it today. Stage three was pre-caldera volcanism and resurgence. That was from 630,000 years ago to 70,000 years ago. You can see the Mallard Lake resurgent dome and the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome, just uh, northeast and uh, northwest of Yellowstone Lake. 
And stage four is about uh, 150,000 years ago hydrothermal activity, which you see everywhere around Yellowstone Lake. So the upcoming video to this will be the Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles. And uh, we'll see how they treated the uh, quake just northeast of the new thermal area that they found. There's been a new thermal area just uh, north east of, uh, northwest of Yellowstone Lake. They have not observed that close hand. I assume that they will do that once the weather gets better. They have to send in a team. It's difficult to get in there because there are no roads close by. And of course they would have to set up camp, set up their equipment, and uh, just observe and uh, map out what exactly is there. Is it a new geyser area? Is it a new springs, hot springs area? Is it mud flows? Fumaroles? What are? What is it exactly? Because it's very hot and the trees are dying and they have to map this area. Yellowstone, as we know, has over 60% of the world's, world's geysers and has over 10,000 hydrothermal uh, areas there for them to map. And after all these years, they have so much work to do. There's still a lot to be done. And they're learning and coming out with new announcements, new findings every week that they post on their Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles. So we'll look into that as well. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.